So today we're kicking off a brand new series. How many of y'all like new series? New series alert. There's a new series called Even More. Even More. Look at the person next to you and say, God has even more favor for your life. Even more hope for your life. Even more joy for your life. Even more peace for your life. He's a God of more than enough. Where John 10.10 10 says the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, that part makes us get isolated and, 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 and restrict and back up and say, oh, I hope it doesn't happen to me. All the second half of John 10.10 10 says that our God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. Come on, shout even more. I'm already preaching. I'm excited. Here's the anchor verse for week one of even more. Romans chapter 15 verse 13 on the screens. Now, I'm telling you right now, this verse right here, it, you may want to run around the, the room. This, this was worth your drive. This was worth you tuning in online. This verse, how many of y'all have ever read a verse and it just pops off the page at you and you're like, I'm telling you right now, boy, I'm about to run around this house. Watch this. It says, may the God of hope woo, fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. And this part right here blesses me. So that you may, say it out loud. Overflow. overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on, shout one more time. Even more, even more. Let's pray. Father, give us ears to hear you. I'm coming out of the gate strong. God, I'm so excited about seeing even more miracles break out in our church family. I'm excited to watch families that were falling apart begin to fall into place. We're ready, God, to shout from the rooftops of all the testimonies that are about to break out in the month of August 2024 because you are the God of even more. Give us ears to hear you. Give us a mind ready to understand and a heart ready to receive. Somebody should shout amen. Amen, amen. amen. So we did take a little break. How many of y'all got a little bit of a breather this summer? <laughs> Was all the parents excited to send your kids back to school? Okay, <laughs> that was terrible. Come on. They're like, hey, man, good. Get, can I drop them off today? <laughs> we took a little uh, breather, way different than we normally do. Kind of moments peppered in throughout the month of July. Came back, rode out the hurricane, experienced all of that with you guys. Neighborhood was without power for six days. I mean, it was a lot. We, I, I want to brag on our team. We set up uh, at our headquarters a disaster relief site, and the city was coming to us. Uh, man, Red Cross was coming to us. FEMA was coming to us. Y'all, between the two major storms we've already experienced in the last 60 days, we fed almost, we're just shy of 200,000 people were fed because of your generosity, because of people that showed up and served. We had thousands of people showing up to serve, chopping up food so that we could go out and reach people. We were able to partner with over 30 churches to help them reach their communities and a lot of rural communities. So thank you. But in the month of July, there was a lot that was happening. We took a couple little breather moments. We went and saw my family in Oklahoma. We stopped in, said hello, and then got out there pretty quick. And then we went to... Then we went to Illinois and, and saw Pastor Jackie's family, and, and it, was, it was a good time. It, it was on the way back, and I've shared uh, some of this with you guys, but on, on the way back, I, I got that rental, the rental van. Um, normally, we drive an SUV, but I got a rental van, and I added the insurance. Don't act like y'all drive a rental van real conservative, okay? <laughs> they asked one of the fastest NASCAR drivers what the fastest car in the world was, and he said a rental vehicle. Because <laughs> people are like, ah. So anyways, we were, uh, we were driving and uh, minding our own business and a deer jumped out in front of me and I hit it at 80 and totaled the vehicle. That was a lot happening in the month of July. And then in the midst of that, my kids want to play board games, which board games to me are super boring. And then my daughter's like, can we do a puzzle? I, how many of y'all like puzzles? Come on, you're like, you're into puzzles. Great. I feel like it's the first step to giving up. I do. <laughs> I do. I'm like... 3,000 pieces. Let me see if I can jam this all into this thing and make it make sense. This is, this is what giving up looks like. Um, so I, <laughs> I didn't want to do that. And then we had a, a pool where we were at that was salt water. Now, for some reason, it gives me peace of mind when swimming with kids with chlorine. <laughs> I'm like, y'all haven't gone to the bathroom in hours. They're like, oh, yes, we have. I feel like chlorine shocks shocks it and, and it makes me feel more at peace. With salt water, I'm like, mm -mm, it's, all salt, it's all salty. Everything is, 
it's uncomfortable, but we had a we had a pretty good time. We got recharged and we're coming back strong. <laughs> Uh, but I'm excited specifically about starting this series off because last or earlier this year, we saw so many moments when we gathered and we began to pray Monday through Friday. It was the first time we'd ever done it. And we didn't know if a handful of people were gonna show up or if thousands were gonna show up. And we had these upper room moments. There was ingredients in the room where we unified together. And we're gonna unpack this a little bit today where we gathered together in his name and there was tangible tangible miracles. I'm talking about diagnosis is reversing. I'm talking about people showing back up and saying, hey, I went to the doctor and we prayed on Monday. I went to the doctor on Wednesday. Y'all, they couldn't find anything. Like we were hearing story after story. And you know what I love about these moments? That if God did it for them, he can do it for you. That's where you should have shouted. If God did it for them, he can do it for you. And so our goal this month is to set up, humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and finish this year strong. Look at the person next to you and say, let's finish strong. Come on, let's finish strong. Now, there's always this misconception during this, this season. People get a little intimidated. Like, I don't, I don't know what to say, Pastor Daniel. I love this idea. Like, you cannot eat Ben and Jerry's and you can pray for me, but I don't always know what to say. I feel like when I'm praying, it just kind of comes off as rambling or babbling. I just, I don't know what to say. And I've said this for years. The only way to come up short in prayer is to not show up. It's the only way to come up short. The Bible says in James 4, 8, and this is a promise, draw near to God. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. We can't represent in action what we haven't found in prayer. Like faith without works is dead, prayer without action is incomplete. Jeremiah 29, 13 says it this way, you will seek me, and you'll find me, if you seek me with all your heart. If you'll seek me with all of your, your heart. I'm so passionate about this month because I really, really believe, because y'all, we hear and we know and we talk to y'all in this lobby on the weekly of some things you're walking through. Wave at me if you're believing God for a miracle this month. Come on. Can you just muster up a little bit of mustard seed faith to believe for a breakthrough this month? That God would break off that addiction once and for all this month. That the last panic attack you had was the last panic attack you had. That this month is the month that fear falls off of your life and anxiety breaks free off of your, I'm preaching better than you're responding. How many of y'all are believing God for this? I'm believing for it. I woke up this morning, I was praying for some very specific things that we're believing for as a, as a, as a, as a personal family, and then also some things that we're pray, praying for for our church family. Here's the reality. God doesn't build small faith for small things. God builds big faith for great things. And this is a great opportunity to approach him open-handed and say, God, give me big faith. Give me the faith that can take off the head of Goliath. Give me the faith to scale that mountain and trust you even when I can't track you. I don't need small faith for small things. I want some big faith for some greater things. And prayer is the bridge. Prayer is the bridge between the best that I can do and the best that God can do. So when you approach it, and I think we've almost gotten in this mindset, especially in Americanized culture. Now we have a lot of people that watch internationally, but prayer has almost become this like, oh wow, you're really going through a lot. You should, I guess you should pray about it. I don't, should you maybe pray? I don't know. My grandma used to pray about it. Should, should we pray? And we've almost gotten this mindset that prayer is only for crisis moments. Prayer is only when you need to get that job interview aced. Prayer, prayer is the is when you're when you're in the middle of a mess. Like I, I guess I should, I guess I should pray. No, prayer has to be our first priority, not our last resort. Prayer has to be more than the box on the wall. You've heard me preach this. More than the box on the wall that says break in case of emergency. Come on, we need to pray. It, more than ever, we need to pray. I feel so much faith on that. We need to pray more than ever. Have you turned on the news? We need to pray. Have you seen what's happening around the world? We need to pray. Whichever way you stand politically, we still need to pray. And we need to pray for those who are in authority. We need to, we need to pray. The human condition says, man. But the spirit man inside of you says, I will put my 
knees to the ground and lift my hands towards my Savior where my help comes from, and I will ask him to heal our, our land. I read, this, I read this story about this little kid, and they did a 21 days of prayer moment at their church, and there's maybe 80, 90 people in the room, and the pastor was, he did this like pacing thing in the front, and he would pray, and, and I think it was more just to monitor the church than, are you praying? Let me see if you're praying. But there was this little boy, and the little boy, every time he would walk by, he could hear this kid saying, Tokyo. Tokyo, God, Tokyo, Tokyo, Tokyo. And he was like, what's he saying? Tokyo. So afterwards, he was shaking everybody's hands and was leaving the prayer service. And he, the, the little boy was walking out with his parents. And he said, hey, son, I'm so grateful. You're probably the youngest in the room. And man, you were praying with such fervency. The little boy said, what's that mean? He said, uh, with passion. And he's like, what's that mean? He said, you were praying. You were praying and I'm proud of you. <laughs> You were here and you were praying. But can I ask you a question real quick? While I, while I was walking by you, I kept hearing you say uh, Tokyo. Like to- I, I thought I heard you saying Tokyo over and over. Why were you doing that? And he said, well, sir, I just finished taking my geography test yesterday. And I'm praying that Tokyo is the capital of France. Uh, <laughs> God will switch it up. <laughs> You know, what's funny is we laugh at this story, but many times we pray because we want God to better our lives, better our circumstance. You know, even non-religious people statistically turn to prayer in times, or they appeal to a higher power in times of need because they need him to intervene or change something in their life. An article on prayer here, specifically in America, Newsweek, The quoted sociologist Dr. Greenlee is saying more than 78% of all Americans say they pray or have a moment of prayer at least once a week. Said that 57% of Americans reported that they have a moment where they say some sort of prayer at least once a day. And the number one reason people pray, according to this study, was asking God to show up and do something and have a intervention moment in their lives because they had hit a rock bottom moment or they needed him to move in a situation. And we teach again here at Hoopsie all the time that it is the repetition, the consistency. It's that first 20. It's getting in his presence, even when you don't feel like it. It's waking up early, getting in his presence and just talking to the Lord. I was up in the Sacramento mountains of right outside New Mexico area. And uh, every morning I'd get up and I would, I would go outside and, and I would just listen. I would just, I would just listen. I wasn't, I wasn't saying, God, you know how we got to get this paid. God, we got to get this building built. God, we, I wasn't shouting all my demands. No, I decided to have a different posture. I just went out there and I just listened. I was quiet. And then I said, God, I see all of your handiwork. I see what you've shaped and what you molded, not only my own life and my family and created us in your image, both male and female. But look at, look at this. Look at these mountains and look at what you've, you've done. And I felt the presence of God so, so tangibly. And listen, you can feel the same. You don't need a mountaintop moment to feel his presence. You can feel his presence in the bathroom of a McDonald's, just standing there saying, God, I need you to move in my life because I've got great news. His presence is present everywhere when you gather in his name. His presence is present in that doctor appointment, in that interview, that job interview, in that crisis, in that marriage struggle. His presence is present. And when his presence is present, oh, miracles break out. When his presence becomes present in your life, we have, we have some merch out here that we're selling. If, if it hasn't sold out, it says miracles are normal. Because our, what we know about Jesus is anytime someone's need met his power, miracles became normal. And that's what we're experiencing here at Hope City, that people can walk in one way and walk out set free, healed, and delivered. Come on, somebody say miracles are normal. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 says this. Rejoice always. How often? Always. Pray continually. That is a consistent. That's a, God, thank you for your faith. God, thank you that you're, you're giving me direction. God, I need peace in this moment. God, I need to calm my emotions. God, pray continually. Give thanks in, in all circumstances. Not just when you're winning. In all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
Again, when you make prayer your priority, miracles become your lifestyle. When you make prayer your priority, favor is something you can walk in. When you make prayer your priority, there is a moral compass that you're steered by in the word of God. And it says, hey, 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 no, don't go down that path. No, 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 don't drink that. No, don't, don't smoke that. No, no, don't, don't interact with her. Don't, no, no, don't, don't, don't jump into that relationship with, with him. When you are making prayer your priority, you will have a clear response. You'll be able to feel the spirit of God more. How many of y'all are grateful for those little check moments, those little, those little spirit-led nudges? How many of y'all have experienced that before? So watch what happens. Throughout the year, uh, life gets busy. There's things contending more and more for our attention. So that's why we set aside this time to spend time in this, with the Spirit of God so that we can feel those nudges more clearly, so that we can hear those whisper moments, so that he can wake us up out of our sleep and say, hey, that's not going to be the right business decision, that we would know his voice so clearly that you could... You, could, you can discern, there would be discernment just always active in your life, but that's why we have to set aside these moments to pray. Y'all, y'all getting anything out of this? I am, I'm preaching myself happy. Everywhere Jesus went, <laughs> miracles were normal. The Bible says this in Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Don't be anxious about, about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God in the peace of God. Oh, I love this verse in the peace of God. This is not a peace that you can find on a vacation. This is not the kind of peace you can Google or buy on Amazon. That was a word for somebody. You don't need to buy anything on Amazon today. And all the husbands say, amen. And the peace of God <laughs> and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it'll guard your hearts and it will guard your minds in Christ Jesus. This is what happens when you pray. This is what happens when you spend time in the presence of God. Come on, look at the person next to you and say, this month, I'm getting my peace back. Come on, look at your second choice and say, this month, I'm getting my joy back. Now look back at your first choice and say, take a good look at me. I know this is super awkward for a lot of you and I love it. That's why I do it. Take a good look at me. Come on, say it. Take a good look at me because I will not look the same at the end of this month. You're about to see somebody set free. You're about to see God move in a miraculous way in my life. This is terrible, but I'm going to admit it. Uh, I read a study that said people are so uncomfortable looking at the person next to him. And I was like, man, that's why I'm going to push it a little bit more. I love it. I love it. The introverts are like, I'm going to pray a lot this month. Okay. The extroverts are like, hey. like that's enough. All right, here we go. One thing that we have found as a church when we fast and we pray at the very beginning of the year and when we fast and pray at this point in the year, it almost unlocks, uh, there's these game hacks. You know, my kids play. Brecken is a phenomenal gamer. He didn't go to college on scholarships now for gaming. He's amazing. So there's all these game hacks and all this stuff. This is almost like a spiritual hack for us that in the month of August, this new beginnings month, we have the ability to unlock some supernatural momentum. Because when you've got momentum, it's, it's difficult to stop momentum. And we as a church have a lot of momentum. We've had it since 2015 and we continue to have it. It's a lot of momentum that is happening here. And I believe some of the ingredients of this momentum is that we pray in January to start the year off strong. We pray in August and fast in August to end the year out strong. So this is going to be a momentum-filled month. Have you guys experienced momentum in your life? Come on, wave at me. One of the definitions of momentum, and I like this, it says this. It says, the progress, progress gained by a moving object. The vehicle gained momentum as the road dipped. So um, we're on a back road uh, in this uh, minivan. Um, about a week before I totaled it with the deer. I'd never seen a deer explode. It thing. <sighs> I mean, he made eye contact with me. He was like, I'm alive, I'm alive, dead. Like, it was awful. I'm so sorry, it's terrible. It was bad. I'll skip that the next service. It was traumatizing. My son's like, he made eye contact with me. I was like, 
Me too, buddy. <laughs> Two weeks before, we're driving down this backcountry road to see some of uh, uh, PJ's parents and uh, family. And so we're, we're on the back road, and my kids are gassing me up. Like They're like, Dad, did you feel that? On the way back, we got to hit that faster. And mom's like, honey. And I'm like, mm -hmm. all right, kids, we're going to do it. Like, <laughs> I got the insurance. <laughs> if you work for Enterprise, it wasn't you. Okay, I'm just... It wasn't enterprise. But anyways, so we're driving back and my kids are gassing me up. Finley's like, it's, come on, dad. Come on, dad. Let's go. Come on. What I underestimated was there was a, a dip. It was a little bit of a dip. And that dip, that downward dip, it created some momentum. This is a true story. This is not exaggerated at all. When we came up, the, it, was, it felt like a ramp, like OG, Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> We came up that thing. Now, I was driving to all the constables in the room, anywhere between 40 and 80. And I was... <laughs> this Chrysler Pacifica went off the ground. We left the ground, and boom! And we, no one said anything. We all just stayed... We all just stayed quiet. <sighs> Even the kids that were gassing me up, they were like... And I'm, I'm, and I look over and Red's like this. We left the ground. And I said, that was rapture practice. That was, I'm all the way up. <laughs> it was unbelievable. All right, we're talking about momentum. I want to, I'm going to give you three moments connected to even more momentum that we can experience this month in our lives. We need momentum. And there is a fresh wind about to blow behind the back of your family, that dream. I'm telling you, this is the month to take that dream off the shelf. This is the month to ask God to breathe on that idea that he gave you years ago that you have talked yourself out of. I'm telling you, and not only was that dream and that business idea designed to bless you, but all the people connected to your purpose. If that was for you, you should say, I received that. I'm telling you, three moments connected to even more momentum. Title of today's sermon, if you're taking down notes, is The Push, The Pause, His Promise. Sometimes in life, we just need a little bit of a push to create some momentum. When my kids want to swing on a swing, Daphne or Fox, they're like, Daddy, can you give us a push? And once I give them that, that push, now they've got momentum. But inside of God's incredible plan, His protection, and a lot of times redirection, that also creates momentum when we experience what is maybe a Paul's season. Not like puppy Paul's, not P-A-W-S, <laughs> P-A-U-S-E, like Paul's, like a Paul's season where God says, hey, this Paul's is gonna actually be like a slingshot moment to create some momentum in your life. And then ultimately, the goal is to receive his promise. So here's the first takeaway this weekend connected to even more momentum. Write this one down, the push, the push. I was driving. Now, H-Town, uh, I know we have a lot of people around the nation and world that watch, uh, but we can do better. Okay, I'm just going to say that right now up top. H-Town, we can do a little bit better. There was, this, there was this guy, and he had a, I don't know what kind of car it was, maybe like a Nissan Versa or something, and he had, he had broken down, and he was out of the car, and he was trying to push that car on his own, and his girlfriend was in the driver's seat like, you got to do better, and, and, and people were swerving and swearing giving him the H-Town thumbs up with the wrong finger. H-Town, we can do better. We can do better. So I passed him like, oh, little buddy. Like he could barely, it was just a little hill, but he couldn't, he couldn't get any momentum. So I pulled over in the H-E-B parking lot and I ran over there and I said, I'm praying for you, buddy. And I ran back and got my car and drove off. I'm not gonna, it's too hot. It's too hot. Out. I'm just kidding. That's terrible. I was like, let's do this, you and me. So he grabbed, he grabbed the one side and I grabbed the other side. And then this other guy jumped out of his car. And then another guy jumped out. And within a couple moments, we pushed him over that little hill to a downward hill moment and he had momentum. And he rolled right into the Shell parking lot. It was perfect. He ran out of gas, walked over, blessed him. Like it was, it was such a cool moment. All he needed was a little bit of a push. That's all he needed. And sometimes in life, that's what we need. Just a little bit of a push. That's why this month, I'm, we're going to challenge you this entire month with just a little bit. Sometimes it's a gentle push, and sometimes it's a direct push. Like check yourself before you wreck yourself sort of push. 
push. Come on, somebody. Just gently push the person next to you. Come on, don't, not too hard. That's assault. And this push, this, this, this push is something that we have to lean into and it starts with surrender. That's why I can't say it enough throughout this message that this 21 days of prayer and fasting is so essential and foundational for that push to happen towards momentum in our life. It's like a lighter fluid on an already existing fire, a fresh fire, maybe to reignite the fire that, that God has already started in your life. And so during the rest of the month, if you're taking down notes, I'm going to give you a quick takeaway challenge for the month. And we've got an entire month. We should be able to accomplish this between now and the end of this month. I want to challenge you to read through the gospels. Every day when you're praying, every day when you're spending some time in devotion, read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then I want you to add in some Acts, A-C-T-S, the book of Acts. It's 28 chapters, and you can read through the Gospels, and I want you to go to the book of Acts. But specifically, I want you to camp out for a couple moments, maybe one full day in Acts 2. Not like a full day where you take off work, but like in your devotional time. You're like, hey, my pastor said I don't need to come in work. I got to read through the book of Acts. And he's like, what? You're like, click. <laughs> like, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. This, this book is special. On the day of Pentecost came. It says this, they were all together in one place. Y'all, that's why we're gathering Monday through Friday the next three weeks. Saturday the 10th and the 17th, we're going to gather in one place. You can join us online too. Be here in in spirit while you're watching online. But we're all going to gather like they did because these were the ingredients for a move of God. Watch this. They were all together in one place and suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and it filled the entire house. They're sitting and they're praying and they're spending time in the presence of God and the spirit of God begins to move. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on a few of them, a handful of them, those who had enough money in their checking and savings account, those who didn't have a lot of debts and didn't make a lot of bad choices. No, it said it rested on all of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, beginning to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. These were the ingredients for a move of God. Hebrews 12, 29 says, for our God is a consuming fire. And his fire, y'all, is refining and it's defining. And when we allow the presence of God to consume every area of our lives, it begins to restore holiness, it begins to restore righteousness, and it begins to produce even more momentum in our lives. The closer you get to Jesus, the club's not as appealing. The the closer you get to Jesus, that bottle is not as appealing. Uh, appealing. The closer you get to Jesus, that, 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 that girl who's been distracting you is not as appealing. That guy who, who smells like Tom Ford, uh, tobacco, vanilla, cologne, he's not as, appe- he's not as appealing. No, the closer you get to Jesus, the closer you get to the consuming fire, it begins to burn off things in your life that should have never attached themselves to you that we carry around like a badge of honor. Oh, this is what I went through. Let me tell I'm not talking about testimony. I'm almost talking about bragging about how you used to be. I talked to these men up in the Sacramento mountains. I said, some of y'all need to quit. I've already heard you at lunch talking. Boy, you should have seen me. I could drink. I could do a whole six pack. Nobody could stop me. I could drink more than everybody. I said, you're bragging about it, but you're a Christian now. Yeah, I'm a Christian now. I read the Bible. That's what I do. And you're almost sad about it. No, when the consuming fire gets a hold of you, everything changes. When the consuming fire begins to refine and define my drug addict, alcoholic dad, everything changed. So what does the consuming fire need to consume in your life this month? Again, it's producing a momentum that can't be stopped. We were grilling out like... I don't consider myself a grill master, but I think I'm pretty good. I know about the spices. (laughs) I don't know what that was. And so I had these steaks ready. I mean, these things were ready. And I had the grill fired up. Like it was ready. (laughs) Like I was, and I got those grills on the steak and I, or the steak on the grills and I went in the house. Don't laugh at that. Don't laugh at that. It's early. Y'all are bad. (laughs) You expect that from Pastor Brandon, but not me. So I went in and I come back out and I open up the, there's no heat. 
I'd ran out of propane. I mean, bing, bing. I'm like, I can't believe this. It's hot outside, but the grill isn't working. I'm taking them inside. I'm trying to cook them inside. I'm like full on panic mode. The steak ended up awful. It was like a Golden Corral Tuesday night steak choicers night. It was, <sighs> if you're a manager at Golden Corral, we love you. I don't even know if it's real red meat. Amen. It might be turtle dove. I don't know. It's, I needed more. I needed more fire. And just like we saw and we heard in Acts 2, fire starts in the presence of God. Yes. I couldn't finish what I was grilling and I couldn't finish what I had started because I had no fire. Y'all, there's some things God wants to do in your life and he is faithful to complete the work he started in your life, but you cannot live this life, be the leader, the husband, the father, the mother, the, the wife, the daughter. You cannot live this life without the fire of God. You can't live this life without that fresh wind behind your sail and the momentum of God. And the presence of God is encountered through prayer, worship, word, and gathering together. Hebrews 10, 25 says this, let us not give up the habit of meeting together. As some are doing. There's a lot of deconstructionists and people online saying, you don't need church anymore. You don't need to gather. You can get all of God just by walking around in nature. No, there's something about gathering in a community. There's something about iron sharpening iron. There's something about looking at somebody in the eye and confessing your struggles and hearing that they once went through it and got set free themselves. There's something about community. How many of y'all are grateful for the community of Hope City, the connect groups at Hope City? We all need a little push. We need that gentle push. For me, I had a pastor early on in my life. I didn't need a gentle push. I needed like a push. Like you will derail your life if you keep on this trajectory. I needed a push. The second moment I want to look at as we're bringing this in for a landing in just a moment, I want to look at something else that's connected to even more momentum. It's the pause. Have you ever noticed God will insert a pause in something even though he's asked or maybe pushed you in a direction? There's things that he needs to develop in us spiritually so that we can grow in maturity and have the discernment for what's to come in the Paul season. The Paul's actually helps us hear God's voice more clearly. I said it a minute ago, but feel the nudges and those intuition moments. And when we pray, we begin to develop the understanding that God might be saying this, and you're going to feel this throughout this 21 days. You're going to feel this holy pause. God might be saying, no, this is a not yet moment. I know you've been asking, but this is not yet, not yet, daughter, not yet, son. Or it's a, hey, you've been trying to kick this door open and I'm closing it. For your protection, the Lord might say, no, this isn't a no moment, or this isn't, this isn't what's best for you, so the moment. But if we're only pushing, if we're only running fast with no cadence or rhythm, it's difficult to not be distracted. It will also be difficult to see when God is saying, I'm taking you in a different direction for your protection. How many has experienced that before? Like you were going one way and God rerouted your direction and then you found out in the aftermath, like, Ooh, you saved me a lot of heartbreak. Like that's a good thing when he closes a door or changes a direction in your life for your protection. That's where you should throw up your hands and say, thank you, Lord, that I didn't go my way because your way is so much better. The pause is really important. Because the pause also helps us not burn out. That's why in Genesis, God introduced the Sabbath, a moment of pause and rest. The misconception, though, is this. But if I stop and I pause, it will actually stop momentum in my life. But it's really the opposite. There's actually power in the pause. And I've said this for many, many years. And I'll reiterate it again. Slowing down in seasons like this one right here that we are in this 21 days of prayer, slowing down is actually a power move. It's proof of maturity that I'm going to pray. I'm going to pause. There's power in the pause. Jackie and I rented a pontoon boat a while back and we were out up in the hill country area and we're, we're out there like, <laughs> we're out there in the water. And, uh, we ended up throwing down, uh, an anchor because if we didn't, the boat was going to float away. The, the anchor was was important because at another point, I didn't lower the anchor down low enough and we jumped in the water and I, <laughs> I splash you. And like, we were having a lot of fun. It was, I'm like, <coughs> like I'm, it wasn't that fun. And so I look over and the boat's 
pretty far away. Why? It had drifted. See, a lot of times when we don't have that anchor moment, these 21 day moments where we throw our anchor down and say, God, I'm not going to move until I see you move. I'm going to pray and I'm going to pause and ask God you to, for you to move because my life has, my life has drifted. Because if you're not keeping your attention on Jesus, you will, you will drift. There's power in the push. There's supernatural power in the pause and the last takeaway. We'll all experience even more momentum when we do the push, when we allow the pause, and then ultimately we, we will receive his promise. Psalms 27, 23 says, the steps of a good and righteous man or woman, it's, it's humanity, are directed by the Lord. And he delights in his way this part right here, and he will bless his path. How many of y'all are grateful for a God that will bless your path? He'll put a light up. He'll light it up. So momentum is found when you lean into the push, when you trust God in the pause, you possess faith for his promise. We were on um, a trip. Uh, Pastor Jackie spoke at a women's conference in California, and we had a day where we could break away, and we took the kids to a little amusement park there, and They've never, uh, they haven't ridden a lot of roller coasters. So Brecken and Finley, they can, but Fox and Daphne, five and eight, they just didn't know what, they, it was like, like their, both their eyes were like, okay. And so we're just rolling. I mean, we are, we are moving quick. And to us, it wasn't a big deal. We've ridden lots of roller coasters. But at one point, Fox was gripping Jackie's arms so tight. And his eyes were like this. And I was like, Fox, you having fun? He's like, like, sweet little Daphne, she had dug her little nails into my arm. She had a hold of me and Fox had a hold of mom so tight, ultimately because they knew that we would protect them. You know, during the roller coaster moments in life, the truth that we can cling to is that we have a God that's holding on to us. We have a God that we could dig our nails in and say, God, I need you. Hi, I'm feeling at the end of myself, and that's where it's a really good opportunity to grow big faith and trust God in the midst of the madness. Because the truth is, He's right there. Isaiah 41 13 says, I'm the Lord your God, who takes a hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. The next 21 days, we're gonna pray, we're gonna fast, we're gonna spend time at the feet of Jesus. And we're going to hold on to him and say, God, even in the midst of the roller coaster moments of life, I know I can still trust you because you are helping me. Would you close your eyes just for a moment? God, today I pray that this didn't fall on calluses or a place of flippancy in our hearts. But God, I pray that today we would receive the push, the challenge, God, to slow down and pause, to tell our flesh during this 21 days of prayer and fasting Flesh, you're not in charge of me anymore. I'm taking a break from the things that are distracting, whether that's social media, my phone, food, certain things that I cling to to self-medicate. I pray, God, that as I lean into your presence, I will receive your promise. Everything's connected to Jesus. And God, this month, we want to bear much fruit because we're clinging to you and you alone. Would you stand to your feet for just a moment? Would you lift your hands open-handed like this? This open-handed posture, I talked about this last week. This open-handed posture is a posture that if you're holding on to something that you shouldn't be, God can grab it and pluck it out of your life. But it's also ready to receive like a deposit, everything that God has for you. So can we just open-handedly lift our hands towards heaven? God, meet every brother, meet every sister, meet every son, meet every daughter where they're at. God, there's some stuff in our lives that we, need, we just need to let go of. We have been hanging on to it for too long. This, I feel strong about this. This is a month of full-blown redemption in the area of forgiveness. There's something that you have been holding on to. You've been holding on to maybe unforgiveness or bitterness towards someone. I feel the Lord saying that he is shifting peace in your life. Some of you have been just holding on to some pain and, and certain songs will trigger it. Certain smells will trigger it because it reminds you of uh, someone who hurt your heart 
This is the month, God, I pray that the stinging ends, that freedom breaks out. God, this is the month of miracles. Say it out loud. This is the month of miracles and breakthrough in my life. Now say it like you mean it. Prophesy this month is a month of miracles from my life, a month of breakthrough in my life. Now, come on, can we give God praise ahead of time, knowing that he's going to come through on his word? The push, the pause, so that we can receive his, his promise. I want to encourage you over the next three weeks, Monday through Friday, show up at least once. Figure it out in your calendar. Talk to your boss. See if you can go in a little later. 9.30 at our headquarters. It's a mile from here. HopeCity.com slash 21 days for address information. 9.30 to 10.30, we're going to pray. We're going to seek the face of God. If you can't make Monday through Friday, it's okay. This upcoming Saturday and the following Saturday, right here at West Houston in our chapel, Katie Richmond in the building you guys are temporarily in, or Woodlands Campus, you're meeting at your building, and then joining us online, we're going to pray on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We're going to seek the face of God and believe for miracles. And we're going to come back on the 25th, come on somebody, and we're going to rejoice and celebrate the risen faithful, worthy King Jesus. All right, close your eyes just for a moment. I know today was more of a challenge, a push. With every eye closed just for a moment. Maybe some of you would be in the room and say, Pastor Daniel, you're watching the line. You're like, here's the truth, Pastor Daniel. Uh, the push is awesome. Paul's incredible. His promise. I don't pray because I don't know him, but I want to. I, I want to add to that that total, that 2,909 commitments to Jesus, I want to be the next one. I want to give my life to Jesus for the very first time today. Or maybe you're the second invitation. You want to rededicate your life. Maybe you want to make things right. Maybe your life has, has swerved way off and you've been living reckless and living the prodigal life. But today's a great day to realign your life, to jump into 21 days of prayer and fasting and reconnect your faith again to his heart. I'm going to count to three. We won't embarrass you, but I want you to boldly just slip up your hand if you fit in either one of those categories. One, I want to give my life to Jesus for the very first time. Two, I want to rededicate. Would you lift up your hand? Three, right there. I see you. I saw you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you and you. And I see you. Amazing. I saw you. Incredible. I saw you back there. I love it. Come on. Can we all pray with our 11, 12 friends who just said, you're talking about me. Can we say this out loud? Jesus, today I'm laying it all down. All my shame, all my frustration, all my sin, all my issues. I'm asking for your forgiveness. From this moment on, I'm going to choose to live for you wholeheartedly. I'm going all in. Jesus, thank you for hanging on that cross, giving up your life for mine so that I can live a life filled with freedom, filled with hope, and filled with joy. You are my Father, my Savior, and my Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say amen.